Welcome to the last episode of our Unbound series, everyone. This episode, we will be discussing things with Grant Howitt and Chris Taylor. But before the episode, as usual, announcements. Yep. Uh, first up, if you missed the first session of my A Tale of Twinkle and Awe campaign last Friday, uh, please check out the video on demand and join me every other week with an absolutely amazing cast of folks. Uh, you can catch us at twitch.chimera.games uh, and then tune into my design partners stream this coming Friday at capeandblade.chimera.games. Hey, Ryan. What what yeah. time? What time oh, on 7 30. Friday? 7.30. Yeah, it's at 7.30. 7.30 e, uh, Central Time. I'm sorry. 7.30 p.m. Central Time every other Friday. Um, and Cape and Blade is at 8 p.m. Central Time every other Friday on the Fridays between us. So... There you go. Yeah, it's uh, fun. Secondly, we are still on the lookout for an artist for a couple new shirt ideas we have. Again, we have some thoughts on the direction that we want to go. Um, we would love to commission a fan of the show if your style fits what we're looking for. Uh, this is a paid gig. So please reach out to us on Twitter or at our website. Uh, contact at character contact.charactercreationcast.com or you can email us charactercreationcast at gmail.com and we will be in touch. Absolutely. And finally, the Audioverse Awards are open for the finalist voting. This is the last set of voting. Um, I believe it's open until December 5th. Uh, we have a lot of folks from the One Shot Network that are actually up for awards. Um, sadly, I did not make it into the finalist phase. Uh, for my audio design on AHB, but um, uh, uh, Horror Borealis has uh, a few really great uh, awards up there. Campaign Skyjacks has some. Uh, some people from uh, Skyjacks Courier's Call are there. Um, and there's so many other uh, fantastic shows to vote for. So uh, head on over to the audioverseawards.net and and give us some votes and, and let's help some people win some very cool awards. Yeah. That should be everything for the announcements. We will be back again after the show with our call to action and not a review again because we still need some. So please leave us a review. Um, in the meantime, let's get on with the show. Yeah, enjoy. Welcome back to our discussion episode. Last time we created characters for Unbound. This episode, we will be discussing the character creation process. We are thrilled to welcome back Chris Taylor and Grant Howitt, the designers of this game. Do you want to reintroduce yourselves for everyone at home? Tell us a little bit about the characters you made last week. Hi, my name is Grant Howitt. I'm a game designer. You can find me at GS Howitt on Twitter. I did not make a character because I was, I was taking the role of the GM, so I was steering discussion. Uh, so uh, I made, I simply made a world. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I simply directed you with my whims. But what, what <laughs> denizen, what player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage did you make, Christopher? Uh, I'm Chris, and I made uh, a reckless idiot vandal. <laughs> 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 um, with ties to big corporations. <laughs> oh, yes. Which honestly is, is great to say and do. Mm. What what was your character's name again? Graf. Graf. Graf like Providence. Graf Providence. Yeah, Graf Providence. <laughs> <laughs> of the Providence Inc. Providences. Mm. Yeah, there you go. N naming characters uh, and NPCs is just one of the great joys in life for me. Mm. <laughs> uh, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Amelia, why don't we tell? Uh, why don't you tell us about your character? Sure. Um, I made. Luminance Edge, um, a retro future kung fu movie enthusiast with a light up katana. That's actually a light bulb, maybe. That's fantastic. I, I mean, I feel like that covered the important. Yeah. I think it did. I think it, yeah. it pretty hard. I like, I like how everyone else had quite high concept characters, and you're like, no, I own a sword. 
<laughs> yep. I mean, honestly, what else do you need? I'm a sword if owner, and the rest of the game simply operates around. It's fine. So that's a solid. Yeah. Like, I've, I've watched that's worse animes. I understand yep. from people who own swords. It's like that's their primary. <laughs> <laughs> that's who they become now. I've just alienated a whole branch of our listeners. Oh, uh, no, <laughs> that's, that's about fifty percent. Um, and and, and under the percent who own swords. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan, what are you? What about you? <sighs> So I bring to the table uh, Orbit <laughs> Starshine, uh, a.k.a. Captain Strata, uh, who she transforms into after a uh, a very rare interaction with Leviathan Blood uh, that unlocked this uh, somewhat mystical ability to transform into a uh, very debonair uh Wonderful, uh, wonderfully dressed pirate captain of sorts uh, who uses her clothing as weapons. Should have also mentioned um, we made a setting. Um, oh, did. yeah, we did yeah, make a setting. Well, you yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I, I like that we started the way around because I really hope that somebody just accidentally hits skip and doesn't listen to the last episode. Yeah, okay, you know what? And then has that as the first block of like, what happens? <laughs> Hold on. Listen, listener, 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 infer it. Go on. <laughs> yep. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, there's, there's quite a long podcast episode you can go listen to, which will, which will describe it much better than I could now. Mm. <laughs> well, should we go ahead then and jump right into D20 for your thoughts? Mm-hmm. All right. D20 for your thoughts? In this segment, uh, we want to talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process and how it relates to this system and to other games. Uh, but first, uh, you know, since you've both been here before, we can't really start with our, uh, generic and, and quote unquote lazy question. <laughs> um, so let's try this. Uh, what is your favorite thing about designing games? I like the way I don't work for anyone else. And that all, is the, nice. all, all the money that comes in to us goes into our business. Um, I, am. I don't, uh, one, one of the biggest problems I found with working in, just working generally, is giving money to someone else and earning, like, like having to earn someone else more money than, than I earn. And that really sat wrong with me. So um, this means I can do my own stuff and get quiet, well, no, loudly socialist. <laughs> and get away with it. Yeah, Chris? So... Mine's a bit more high concept. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> honestly, well, anyway, socialism. The best. The be- well, I mean, it's still about getting paid, don't I? Mm-hmm. Um, it's about getting all the random stuff that's in my head mm. out onto paper, and then getting money for that somehow, and being able to afford electricity. Mm. Um, and that's just that's just wonderful. Like for years, I've had bizarre thoughts, and now I get paid for them. Mm. It's brilliant. You can write them down in D10 tables now. Yeah. That's yeah, great. That's the dream. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it kind of is, actually. Yeah. I don't want to do I mean, anything honestly, else. Honestly, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, really like, nice. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's, it's, it's lovely that it's lovely feeling when people play the games and yeah. get to experience them. And the fact that we make, like, really nice quality books and creating, like, a physical product is wonderful. But the best thing is getting all the random stuff in my head out into a cogent thing in the world is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Mm. What was it like to play test this game? Because it's so open and it allows for so many drastically different things to happen. Like, like what kind of wild ride was that? So the internal play testing was fairly organized because it was run by Garten and I, and we knew where we were coming from and whatnot. And then we sent the play test document out into the wider world. Mm-hmm. And we were not prepared for that. No. <laughs> um, so if you're playtesting something like uh, Dungeons & Dragons, where there's these very rigorous rules that codify every situation, mm-hmm. um, and there's a world and everybody's roughly on the same page, it's very easy to collate those results and compare and go, okay, this is where the system has a problem. Mm-hmm. This is where the world doesn't make sense to some people. Mm. Here, we were literally getting games where people were playing eco-terrorist whales. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And like they were playing. They were playing Free Willy with C four, <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're having to compare that to our home game. Where, as, as I believe I said last episode, like we were, we were on a field trip. We were wizards mm. on a field trip by mistake. One, one of the characters was the coach driver. 
Hmm. And that's like, I mean, at least we were wizards. We had another game where we would just, we'd happen to be thieves who lived near the ocean. Yeah. Uh, we had one game where we were um, killing whatever it is Drow evolved into in the in, in the nightmarish spider undercity. And so it was really hard to get like how the game feels because mm-hmm. we don't have a we don't have a setting, we don't have a, a core fiction to fall back on. Because mm-hmm. that was that creation process generates mm-hmm. that feel. Yeah, and that's how you make a role playing game is you make a series of mechanics which drive certain behaviours which make certain stories happen, except our stories are very distant from the mechanics at that point. Yeah. And it was about so the real challenge is bring it closer. Um we it used to be dice. We tested mm-hmm. that. I think it was D twenty for a while. It was. It was D twenty for a while. Um, I didn't like it. No. Um, the it was like the the mass playtesting, the the open playtesting. I think was most useful in showing us that we needed to make things clearer. We needed to. Um, I think the the biggest thing we realized was sniper power. Chris, remember that? Oh yes. So. We, we, you've looked at all those powers and like we, you've taken uh, what's it uh, together as one or the power that you you took Ryan mm-hmm. like there's got an evocative name and one of the powers that we had in the original one was just called Sniper it was in the Dead Eye it was, it was for the Dead Eye and what they, that meant was that literally anybody who took Dead Eye took Sniper absolutely everyone it was 100% hit rate mm. It and wasn't an especially powerful power either. It was. It was honestly. It wasn't very good. It gave you plus one range. Yeah, but the, but what it did is it gave some. It gave everybody this obvious archetype, this obvious handle to grip onto mm. and build a character ah. around. And honestly, like we didn't want people to have that. Mm. We wanted mm-hmm. them to be a bit uncertain, so that they try stuff they'd never try. Because if I'd if if if, if, if for instance Amelia, if your if your um, striker character had a sniper power. Like, we wouldn't have gotten into a light bulb sword. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it would have right. just been a gun. Mm. Mm-hmm. And yet, we got, we got to light bulb sword. Um, and it, it gave people an easy out. It let them Ooh. just sort of go, oh, yeah, I know what that is. I can take that as a ret and don't, not have to think about it. So we had to go through the entire book again and change the wording. We had to cut out description. We had to cut out, like, specific and accurate description from powers. <laughs> Mm. and put those into the rules so they were codified <laughs> and understandable, mm. but so that the powers gave everybody enough room to create whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. And that was hell. <laughs> that, that was that, absolutely that's fascinating to months. me, though, that yeah. everybody would pick, like, you know, you go into a game where it's like, oh, you can create everything that you, yeah. anything you want, and people would gravitate toward the thing that is, like, the clearest. Yeah, the, the people, people, generally, generally speaking, people like, like electricity. They'll take Path of Least Resistance. Mm. Mm-hmm. And like you can still generate an interesting character by having a sniper, but like at that stage in the process, if you remember, like we've done core, so we know what the core is, but we still don't know what our characters are. And you've got a yeah. word written down which lets you be okay. This is me. Like every brawler, I'll I'll say pretty much every brawler is the same character, mm-hmm. um, unless you really push it hard because brawler comes with a um, with a personality attached to it. It's got it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's got a word attached to it, whereas dead eye doesn't. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you have to be so careful about telling people what a thing is; otherwise, they'll they'll just completely uh, they'll just use that, and it won't be it won't be their own thing. And then yeah. at that at that point, you should play a game which has a defined setting. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look in the in the role section, you'll see like example characters, and they're just like two or three words. It's not mm. fully fleshed out, but it's like outlaw, and then dead eye has like the 25th Street uh, World Darts Champion ch- Champion as one of mm. the, the example characters. Yeah. Like they're just prompts, just ideas, but it's trying to show you at every single turn mm. that your choice is what matters, not what mm-hmm. the game is telling you. Mm. Like even if you look at the art, all of the character art has at least two different versions of what a dead eye is. There's a person, there's like a, a martial arts person with a bow, and there's mm. a cowboy, and mm. it it shows you every single different thing. Mm. Um, because what we, what we got in the playtest results more than anything was, oh, the combat's great. This is the world I made. Yeah. And like, I need to know about that combat, guys. Can I? <laughs> yeah. Go back to that. Can you tell me a little more? <laughs> how, how many yeah. points did you do? Yeah. Yeah. It was really interesting. Very nice. Uh, well, how do we think uh, that character creation in this game stacks up to other systems that we've played? 
It doesn't. It's different. Um, it, it is. Like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not comparable. Um, you're, you're still running through um, a set of choices all, at all the times. Like, uh, the easiest comparison is actually with Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. um, where you're picking class feats, and, you know, you're tailoring your character to what you want to do. But everything you're doing, you're picking through a specific lens that you've made. Mm. You're you're focusing it in differently, and you're you're viewing it in a different way, and that changes how you're going to see each ability. Each ability is going to become more important to you, mm-hmm. rather than its mechanical benefit. Mm. I mean, do not get me wrong. Unbound was designed as a system for combos and mm. essentially breaking combat. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some it, really the, nasty like the most damaging character in the game is a protector at the end of the day yeah there's some horrendous oh. stuff you can do with protector if you're clever mm. yeah it's um, um like the part of the reason why it runs to six sessions is that we're kind of encouraging you to go really hard and break it and make some interesting combos and then throw it away and try a different character because mm-hmm. like there's a, there's a, a I, uh, Christopher and I both enjoy doing um, both uh, optimizing or like like juicing characters to get really interesting effects out of it. Um, Chris especially, and so we f- we figured we'd write it in, and then just like okay, you get two sessions where you're super optimal, and then you go back to the start mm. rather than trying to balance thirtieth level. But one of the like one of the interesting things that makes Unbound character creation very very different is that you have to do it in concert with your group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You cannot come to a to a game going. I've made a character. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Because what, what world have you made it in? Yeah. How does it work? Right. There's yeah. no What's going on? No you don't, you don't know what's useful or effective. You 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 can't have your fates done. It's impossible to have mm. your fates done before the character stuff. Mm. And I think um, that so, really underlines how important we think Chris. Oh, sorry, Chris and I think session zero is. Yeah. Yeah. And the entire mm-hmm. thing is about collaboration, start to finish. Um, and it's all about like, oh, you should take this power. That would be great for your character. Mm-hmm. And we wanted everybody like around the table to be firing stuff off and talking to each oh, other. Constantly. I can't wait until your character does this thing. Yeah. Oh, we want to, sh- yeah. And trying mm-hmm. to bake that yeah. into character creation. Mm. Yeah. Rather than just go looking through an alphabetical list and picking one. And I really liked that it's like a series of prompts instead of uh, like, here's a bunch of numbers that you get to write down, mm. right? Um, and and almost everything has a, a question about your character attached mm. to it, uh, which is a really uh, both interesting way to say, "Hey, your character, a story matters," mm. and this is going to be kind of a, a narrative, uh, albeit punchy game, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it kind of bakes the narrative feel of the game into it. Yeah, and one of the things that we wanted to be very careful with is that there's no bad choices. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, one of our one of our company um, laws basically is no, it's something called no dead levels. You know, when you hit like a specific barbarian level in D anD D and you get nothing. Yeah, it feels bad. It feels yeah. terrible. It's terrible. Like, why did I bother leveling up? The sorcerer um, got a new spell. Yeah, and the because there's not really levels in this, so so to speak, um, there's no dead powers. You can pick any power in concert with any other power and still be mm. effective. It's still fine. There's, so there's, pick, there's suboptimal choices, but nothing that'll ruin your day. There's, there's not like in Dungeons and Dragons in 3.5, you could use a pole arm and pick a feat that specialized your weapon in spike chain. Like mm. you wouldn't, mm-hmm. but you could. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. There is no power in this that does not work. Mm. Like if you if you pick two at literally at random, you'll have a viable character. And that, then maybe that should be next episode that we all record. We just pick everything at random. Yeah, just, just <laughs> dice rolls the <laughs> whole way through. We just did defying. that for we did a panel at a convention last year mm. where we just grabbed a bunch of random tables from different games mm. and then rolled some dice and like made up character concepts from like these tables from uh, Palladium and from L five R and That's I think amazing. we used the hat table from Honey Heist several times. <laughs> oh, <that's great. laughs> um, it was incredible. It was oh, so much fantastic. fun. It was I, just I love the random idea of tables from random games of rationalizing like, the setting backwards from that. Mm. That's oh, really yeah. cool. That's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was fun. I will say, it was bad, but it was fun. <laughs> I think character creation unbound is hard, and not because not like um, hero system hard or champions. Mm-hmm. Is it champions? Yeah, 
um, which requires a spreadsheet. It's hard because the GM's continually asking you questions and you're having to operate a different part of your brain rather than, I'm going to play, uh, this is Dungeons and Dragons, I know fantasy, I'm going to pick a ranger, I'm going to have a, a companion who follows me around, I've got a bow, I do this much, I roll on some tables, blah, 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 oh, okay, um, I, my family died, orcs killed them, whatever. That's all there, there's, there's a slot, there's a hole waiting for you, there's a slot waiting for you in d to occupy with the character. And, yeah. in, and in Unbound, you like you're being asked to make something that matters. I think you have to show up. Yes, you right? have to be present as a player, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, a thing that like that's always been my hill to die on mm. is that like players need to show up and you need to participate. And like this is a game that requires that. Like unlike something like D and D, where the GM has a thing planned out and you show up and a game happens mm. to you. Like it is not you have everyone's to be here cup for of this. Tea. No, and, like, right. and also you it's not something I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like everyone, like, uh, and, and because like the GM's expressly discouraged from plotting the game because you've got those fates, and so right. like the GM knows that so I know what the what the story is that you're trying to steal this district, and I know mm-hmm. what's going to happen in between that, and we're just going to update the fates until maybe game six, at which point we make some new characters. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah, like it's it was designed to stop GMs doing so much work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very much a burn bright and fast system. Like, yeah. yeah. I trying to take it past six games. I cannot imagine. Yeah, do not. Don't do it. It's not worth your time. Yeah. Play a different game. The same way you shouldn't try and I don't know, like surf on a guitar. <laughs> do something <laughs> else. You know, it's just these better tools. Yeah. Although if that worked, Ooh, dang, Ooh. <laughs> you could really shred those waves, right? Oh no. <laughs> Go home. I already am. Stay there. Okay. <laughs> it's legally mandated. <laughs> it's true. How does the process of character creation reinforce the feel of playing this game? And how does it like set those expectations? I, I think mean, we just answered that question. It, it sets it a hundred percent. Like that's the thing. The every expectation within the game, uh, from the scale of the game to the end point, is set during character creation. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um because as as Carl said, you don't turn up with any idea in your head. Like we we work with those touchstones to generate mm-hmm. something from the beginning. Absolutely everything is in character creation. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. it builds from that. I will say we did say magical girl beforehand. We did. So aside from that, we brought magical yes. girls no, into that's, the room. That's true. But and I'm really glad we that. did. Yeah. I, I, but to I be the, fair, I that was based to... on the playing cards that we were using to Oh make hell yeah, yeah, you're so. fine. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It was. Perfect, yeah. A perfect <laughs> a perfect system. A perfect magical girl storm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I, I think I think that it, it gives it gives uh players a level of engagement and a level of uh, ownership over the world which they're which they're expected to keep up. Yeah. Uh, and they're rewarded for keeping up. But it can be it's it can tiring. be challenging sometimes. Yeah, it's tiring. I definitely feel I, it feels though like it's it's a world that it's safe for me to like muck around in mm-hmm. though because I think sometimes you come to the table and a GM has created this world and things mm-hmm. like that and it's like well am I allowed to touch that am I allowed to like uh, you know establish some mm. fact about it or is yeah. that totally on the GM and this like going into this now I know I can I can make up whatever stuff mm-hmm. I want mm-hmm. we've already done it yeah like you already you already own a portion of the setting a right. portion of the setting exists because of you. Mm-hmm. So you've got an equal stake. Was it and pirates? Like, Was that your word? Uh, well, I even, think so. Not even just, that, just that, Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, we pivoted multiple times during that character creation thing about huge world facts. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We changed the time period. Like, this began with stuff about boats at the bottom. That, I, got, I think there still is a boat no, there. there. That's still is a boat, but it doesn't matter. But it, but, yeah. but it got forgotten, right? It, mm. got back, it, right? it got put into the background because it was... While interesting, it was a foundation for something else we were interested in. And we moved things around, and everybody moved things around. They, they changed where the goalposts were. One of mm-hmm. the biggest pieces of advice we give in Unbound is like, hey, it's okay. Like, you're going to generate more than you need. Like, you're going to use about 30 to 40% of the stuff you make in character creation. And those are the bits that you're excited about. And then we'll go forward and you tell a story, and that's fine. But it's better to have it and not need it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but 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 naturally, the campaign finds what's exciting, and just like with the with the character creation, the, the, we we're like, okay, well, actually, it's not about piracy; it's about something else. Then we go on, we grow from that. It's and about that's the feel of pirates. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. my top bit of GM advice when you're going through the 
Unbound character creation is whenever somebody goes, oh, 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 you could do this. Just put a little star in your notes next to that. (laughs) (laughs) And then at the end of character creation, look at all the ones that are starred. Mm. Those are the ones that your players are completely amped about. Mm-hmm. And that will help you give give you little focuses that you can just go. Okay, I know somebody really loved this. I'll make sure to include that. And the mm-hmm. other stuff you can include, not include, mm-hmm. however you need to with your game, your story, what and your narrative. But try mm-hmm. and get those little starred items and things in because your players will love you for it. Yeah. I feel like those are things that your games do really well, though, because I think this is a conversation we've had a couple times that like all of your games have these things that when the players pick them, a GM can very easily go, oh, that's where the story is. Mm-hmm. Like they've chosen this skill or this knack or whatever. And it's it's something that like right away a GM can go, oh, that's that's where the game is. Yeah, I mean, most of that is because I like, uh, speaking specifically for myself, I think God's the same way, is I hate the power dynamic of DM to player. Yeah. Yeah. I hate I hate the fact there's one person in control lording it over everybody else. Like, no, I, my I like, world. I like that sometimes. But yeah, I that's different. Yeah. Look, I yeah, it is, it is, it is a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Game Daddy has some stuff he's working through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we we try and break down that that power dynamic mm-hmm. and give give players control. Like everybody's here to tell a story and to have fun. So why don't we let everyone tell a story and have fun? That power also comes with expectations as well. Oh, absolutely. I think they can yeah. be quite tiring for a GM um, to turn up and have to carry the burden of that every single week. And so by giving, by putting everyone on an even playing field, it's much easier to GM Unbound as long as you're able to... Well, the thing, the players have literally told you what they want to happen. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, easy enough. Like, Just honestly, you can, as long as you can think of <laughs> connectors between, other yeah. people, between all the fates, congratulations, mm. you've just written a campaign. Yeah. Because once they've used both those fates, they have to tell you new ones. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Again, you do it again. Like, you get a new fate, and the players, the rest of the party make up another fate, and Mm -hmm. you do Mm -hmm. it again until you want to stop. It's pretty cool. They're always going to tell you what they want. Yeah. So we we can easily see how uh, creating the characters affects the world building. What if we reverse that? Uh, how, How does the process of creating the world affect the character creation process and and kind of how does it ex- change the experience and the outcome for the players it's inextricable as chris was saying it's um part of my inspiration for writing this game is is mexican wrestling which is which will make sense in a second but, um, <laughs> this is a good explanation so it's far. fine so I, 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 I used to I used to do Mexican wrestling. I used to I used to train as a Mexican wrestler. Um, I started doing it for a, for like a piece I was writing, and then I carried on doing. It. I didn't stick with it because it was difficult. But mm-hmm. I um, we used to do bits on uh, on like promos and entrances and coming onto the uh, coming into the ring. And the lesson they tell us was that you have ten seconds to get across your your style, everything about yourself. People have to understand who you are in ten seconds, otherwise they don't care. And we've written a we've written a game which does that, which is like what the world we wrote was not like hugely in depth. It's not Game of Thrones. It's not the Wire we're doing here. It's big. It's brash. It's silly in a lot of ways. We have a magical girl. We have the Viathan blood. We have this. We have a, uh, a someone whose main characteristic is sword, and mm-hmm. like it's big and exciting and it works. And that's all part of the world intrinsically. That's all happening there. And so you get like your characters let you say this bit of the world is exciting to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's not, it's, it's inseparable. I think Um, there's Mm -hmm. that you can't, if you made an unbound character without doing the world creation, it'd be rubbish. (laughs) <laughs> it would be absolutely yeah, it'd be, it'd be very boring. It'd, just, it'd be really dull. Like, oh, I don't know, I'm a cowboy, I guess. I, mean, I don't know. You, you, you can make an unbound character if you were. Yeah, yeah it'll function. Fun, it'll really function. Desperate. Yeah, you could just run them through and then you'd have a, a generic combat simulator. Mm. I mean, don't get me wrong, the combat is dynamic and exciting and it's mm-hmm. fairly simple. It's all mm-hmm. Pushing and pulling and movement and stuff. Um, but it doesn't mean anything. Mm. Um, one of the one of the key rules um, in Bound, Unbound is you have to set stakes before every mm. combat. Y- you have to say this is what we are putting on the line for this combat, and the GM does the same for every scene, even for every single scene, yeah. but specifically combat. Mm. And the stakes aren't we lose the fight; 
the stakes are, um, for instance, in our campaign, they could be um, Alfie gets turfed out of the bar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that's a stake. And if we lose, mm-hmm. that's what happens. Um, there are special um, adversaries in the book that will make that even more complicated. Mm-hmm. They will make you pick two stakes and you always lose one of them. Oh, um, and things like that. Um, the, there's a lot of, just to give you some idea of how silly we went in some of the adversaries, there's a lot of very serious ones. Um, but there is one called your rival. You, you're called called your rival, and it's a joke because we, when in three point five uh, Dungeons and Dragons book, there's an there's an enormous screed of text that talks about your target's target, and it was a joke about the like the complicated rules. So one of the players has a rival. So all the wording is when your rival's rival targets your rival. And it's intentionally <laughs> this incredibly complex and like over the top wording. Um, but their stats are identical to one of the players, but one better in every single way. And if they use us, like if they, if, if it was um, Amelia's character's rival, they would have two light bulb swords mm. because that's can, what you use, I, but they I use like, it better. Can, we, can right. we have them linked together, like Darth Maul? Yeah, exactly. The second yeah. one turns on. Um, and we have all these narratives. Like, we have we, we have um, uh, an, an adversary that's uh, a romantic interest. Mm. And, like, one of their special abilities is moment of genuine sexual tension. Mm. <laughs> and, 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 and we, we got, that, we got, we got, we got wild with it. Yeah. We've got yeah. dragons, mm-hmm. we've got orcs, we've got wizards. We've got all sorts of things. And the idea is that you take these and reskin them. You reskin everything in the game. Um, uh, which, which, of co- which is part of making the world. Like you're, 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 right. you're designing the route into the characters mm-hmm. as you go through and chat, which is exciting and challenging. What do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in the system? And uh, what's one of the best parts that you like? So I think the biggest flaw is this huge cognitive load on mm-hmm. you. <laughs> like there's a huge onus on you to like, cool, come up with something amazing. Mm-hmm. Off you go. Mm. We put in prompts. We help you. We try and help you every step of the way. But if you if you're tired, and you're going to go. I don't know. Uh, the fireball wizard. Wizard. You're going to have yeah. a bad game. Mm-hmm. You've got to buy in. You've got to be excited. You've got to really give it your all and just throw ideas at the wall and hope that something sticks and that somebody else finds it exciting too. Mm. It's not a drunk at three a.m. game. Oh no! It works Whoa. really well drunk at three yeah. a.m. <laughs> yeah. Some weird okay. stuff, okay. but it, okay. it, it does work. <laughs> Hi, that's really maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's it's certainly like if your group comes together and vibes in that way, perfect. But if someone isn't buying it, if someone's like, "Oh, I just want to turn up and roll some dice," no, there's a better game. There's like there's loads of other games you can play which aren't this one, which 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 will serve you better. Mm-hmm. There's also uh, a, uh, sorry, no, it's fine. I was going to say that it's it's the numbers only go up to four. Yeah, mm. that's like, true. It, that it, is, it has a really small numerical. Um, scope which was intentional for us to be able to balance it properly and to fit into like to make every choice equal um but that is like the reason why it runs six games because it can't push past much more that it can't push much more past that and also because the world you've made is inherently daft it doesn't really hang together if you look at it too closely um and obviously you can put in more work and you can do the thing but like you're not showrunners for game of thrones you know you're um you're just turning out to make a fun story with your mates and so, like, we we made it do exactly what it needed to. But if you wanted to simulate something greater or something deeper, if you want rules for specific things, play a different game. The the other slight issue is that there's this weird split in the game. The combat rules and the actual like, mechanical rules of the game are mm. absolutely top-tier, fantastic con game. Now can you imagine running this at a con? <laughs> <laughs> It's nigh impossible. Mm. I think you could give everybody what the setup is already, give them pre journey characters, but then they haven't bought in. Mm. They don't care. I mean, as much. you could run it as like two sessions. You could, like you, you could, could take do up a zero like eight and hours. One of those. Yeah, <laughs> you could do. Like, I think like one option you could do is is make the characters and leave the setting undone. And so mm. you ask the questions about that. You ask mm. questions about cause, or you say, "Hey, we're picking the warrior cause. So whatever we do, it's going to be about war." And then they fill up the details themselves in the sheets, but that's not, not really 
really the intended mm. use of it. But it's the but fact yeah, it doesn't that the, do cons. the combat system is snacky and and snappy. Like it, you it, it can be over fairly quickly. Yeah, you can get a it's full fun. combat in. It's great it's fun. Good. You think you feel clever playing it as well, which mm. is quite nice. Mm. But the the earlier bit just takes so much time. You can't yeah, run it as a con game. You can't I mean, do honestly, a one shot honestly, in an evening. Honestly, it's uh, it was about two hours for us, right? Mm. And if you have a four hour block, that's two hours of world building character you could, creation. Yeah, you could do a fight. Play. You could do a fight and like some setup and stuff. Yeah, after, like, maybe make it you, work. You, could, you, you could, could tell a small story. Yeah, yeah. Look, like, okay, that, that implies working for all four hours of a con slot, which we don't do. Mm. Right, no. that is not who we are. No, there's a lot of talking <laughs> and just, yeah. Random role playing scenes that we've been missing yeah. out on. Or like, or like, I'm just, just going to make sure that my my cigarette lighter still works outside for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to talk about this. Is our favorite part of the show? This is our fan fiction part <laughs> because we don't get to play the game. We don't get gross game all over our characters, mm. but we can at least pretend for a little bit. Um, what happens in this game? Like, what? H- how do we end up stealing this part of this ship city? Slash meeting evil twins. I'm, and duels I'm to thinking the death. that we we definitely need like like several games in. There's going to be a fate mm-hmm. where like Starshine melds with the the ship city in some mm. way to pilot it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm or thinking, melds like, with a Leviathan to or something, it. but something yeah. to actually properly pilot that bit, mm. and then city chase. Oh, a city chase sounds pretty. Oh, sweet. that's oh. nice to see. Like starship battle level size. City chasing after city. I think, and, and like, and like um, Starshine's sister arrives, and she's like an elder god bursting in as the as the city starts chasing. <laughs> or if the campaign hasn't advanced to that stage, she's like a nightmarish, skittering witch who comes <laughs> I, in. I, I, I love the thought of these city-states being kind of, you know, isolated from other city-states, mm. right, mm. that are floating around. But, like, the chase takes us past some of these and some might be are just sitting there and maybe there's some collateral damage <laughs> uh, <laughs> trading paint with two cities right just trading libraries <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like maybe some are also owned by this corporation right mm. and oh then, yeah and now we've got multiple city states on us or, mm. or that's, something that's, that's that's your next game your next game is we have we have a free city and so combat isn't, I'm going to walk into this room, it's I'm going to move the city forward to this area, or I'm going to I'm going to try mm. and take back this block with my unit of guys. Yeah. I'm imagining, like, rectangular, like, Borg cube-style things, but they're just office blocks mm. for the corp. Mm. <laughs> oh, you love to see it. That's nice. Oh, this is... This is good. Yeah. yeah. You know, there, at, at one point, I have to try to turn my sister to the side of good. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that like is, that's, that's, that's a fierce, dramatic scene because I am yeah. I am willing to have that shake out either way. Yeah, <laughs> over a tea, o- o- over a sort of tea service, or like, or like, or like she turns, then Lysarin Grouch turns up and stabs her through the heart. Oh no! Perfect. <laughs> but then Rinse she out the princess a... blood, boys. I mean, it's more powerful than the Viathan blood. <laughs> oh, but since she's got the unnatural stuff. Mm. She just pops into a cocoon and... <laughs> mate, mate, sorry. Like, I, I, I don't know you, you use the word unnatural, but what do you think's more natural from Leviathans? Cocoons or coats? <laughs> like fanciful <laughs> scarves. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Oh, God. And I can, I can just see, like, uh, Amelia's character getting more and more elaborate with the weapon... Mm. Mm-hmm. Like right. rather than like the the sword getting bigger or anything, like you start wiring it into the grid. Mm. <gasps> Every advance improves the sword in some way. Yeah, like oh yeah, you, you you start being able to do strange stuff. Like you 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 you, you can sort of stab out of other light sources by the end of it. Oh. And, but but getting like more and more like quote unquote famous too. Oh yeah, so. like you're this huge celebrity now. Yeah. I really love the thought of um like getting a uh full health uh link from Legend of the Zelda sword blast out of there. Mm. Uh at mm. some point. Well, I mean that that could be your shoot attack to start with. Yeah. And then you start you start leveling that up. It's like laser blasts out of a laser like fluorescent tube sword. 
There's a point where really his character starts taking on sponsorship deals. Oh. <laughs> From well, rival Graf corporations. Still has to decide. You know, are you going to be a corporate? Oh yes, or not? yes, yes. Do I go back to the family? Or do mm. I pretend to go back to the family and then just like <gasps> and steal ooh. secrets? From yeah, the g- go go industrial espionage. I wonder if you have to pretend at one point in order to finalize our escape from this area. Infiltrate a fancy party. Oh, we get this we, captured on purpose. No, no, we've 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 flown the cities away, and they've caught us by blockading us with these office blocks. Mm-hmm. So we've got to sort of infiltrate the entire system of Providence Corp. And mm-hmm. that's when I switch mm-hmm. over sides in Grenadier Marks and then trying to like slip you through security gates. Oh. Yeah. And we could try oh, and do a stealth section. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Grant, I think you're right. There does have to be a fancy party oh, somewhere yeah. in here. Because well, Chris mentioned I mean, those, those nice areas. Mm, and so yeah. I'd really like to see that we, we develop this really grimy, weird CRT punk world. I want to see what the what the posh bit looks like, what mm-hmm. the corporate suites look like. And there's like, there's maybe there's a fountain with Leviathan blood clotting coming out of something well, they're, grotesque. Oh, like they're, they're all, they're all going to be like televisions that are a single pane of glass and see through when oh, they're off. Oh, that really swish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, really breakable yes. through. Yeah. And like yeah. adverts every eight seconds. Mm. You know, just like incredible advertising and we've that developed sort of stuff. micro adverts. <laughs> you don't even the know you're watching directly them directly into your cerebral cortex. I, yeah, it's I, just all subliminal messaging. Yeah. I really like the thought that the the glass and the stuff that the the high posh uh, uh, televisions are made out of, like, do the same like reforming thing that uh, Amelia's character's sword does. Yeah, oh, yes. like, tech. So you can throw people through it. And then it like shatters, <laughs> but then it reforms. Oh, and then it just oh, that's going to be yeah. beautiful for action scenes where we oh, yeah. fires on broadcasting. Yeah, but we've forgotten like, that. Like, think of the slow mo possibilities. Uh-huh. Well, like, and, and, and oh. as it breaks, like it's all still broadcasting onto the glass mm. as you go. Yeah, oh, that looks so cool. <laughs> Oh. But you're having a fight with multiple mooks. Yeah. You throw yeah. one guy through the window and it's reforming as you throw the other guy through. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be nasty. Mm. That's so good. Oh, that's oh. wonderful. Oh. Well, too bad we can't play yeah, this game. Shame, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing on oh. Tuesday? <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, uh, let's get a, into our advancement segment and uh, let's take it up a level. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. So in this segment, we talk about character advancement and growth in the system. First question, how does a character level up in Unbound and how do characters change mechanically when that happens? You complete your fates that you were given during character creation. Uh, one you gave yourself, mm-hmm. one you are given, and that essentially levels you up. Yeah, and for that you get another power, or you can advance Sweet. a power you have already, which gives you like a. It's generally a not a better version, but it makes it slightly more useful in certain situations. It gives you more options. Hmm. Yeah, okay. leveling up and unbound is honestly not a power increase. No, it is a utility and variety increase. Yeah, uh, like you it. can do more things in different ways rather than a plus one. Uh, if if you just add one, it isn't very interesting. No, not at no, all. Nobody cares. Um, like, it's, it's, it's okay in D&D because you're, you're like, it's, it's so much about put, making the number go up or down. Or that, that's fine. And that's okay. That's, that's a viable reward. But our game isn't, it doesn't really do that. And so we want to give people more tricks. I think it's more exciting. So would you advance into those new powers? Do you then answer that question like, um, narratively? or if, if you'd like, Jen, like for a lot of them, um, we, like, it's really only used at startup. And then yeah. the game, like we ask, you're asked to justify mm-hmm. uh, in game how you get that advance. And like a lot of those questions at the start are mainly focused around um, give us some, give us some NPCs, give us some backstory, give us so like okay. why why everyone's asked how did you learn to fight like this? It's to give us organizations who share your views or who you've left or what have you, but somewhere, but a group of people who can fight mm-hmm. and. The the after character creation doesn't quite work so well, so it's mm-hmm. enti- it, it isn't required. You're you're required to justify why you can do this better now, or why okay. you have this new power. But and, and a, a lot of times like, that's that's because of something that's just happened in the story. 
Absolutely. Like yeah. um, a horrid monst- monster has bitten you very badly. Well, it was infected with the parasitic. Now you've got mm-hmm. a natural. It just mm-hmm. it just makes logical sense as to what you have next. Mm-hmm. Um, and you kind of have to make a decision like, am I going to build for pure story or a bit of story and a bit of combo? Mm. Because there's some really, in, as, as, as I believe I mentioned before, there's some really interesting uh, combinations of powers you can do. Mm. Like there's a there's a, a very powerful combination you can do where you never ever make an attack um, in mm. a combat in a system that's entirely about making attacks. Where you just stand there and try and get hit in the face, um, <laughs> and and, or, and your friends get hit in the face because the more they get hit in the face, the more you explode. Mm. Oh. Um, you, you kind of draw everybody else's damage to you, tank that damage, and then go Nova when you've got enough. Mm-hmm. And you can you can play that character completely passively. You just sit them in the middle of a combat and just walk away. And they'll just wow. blow up and kill everything eventually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, that's not the most fun way of doing it, but that is like a powerful combo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you can, you can use that to get you through all the fights, or you can just go, cool, this is the thing that happened in the story last... Mm-hmm. It makes sense then that now I can throw Molotov cocktails and I can set areas on fire. Mm. Um, and you get to pick, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. So it sounds like you can you can cross over. Uh, like I picked an aura first, mm-hmm. but when I level oh, up, you I can maybe can trait you want. Yeah. yeah, absolutely anything oh, you want. Um, all oh. those all those traits are, are are grouped into theme, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, and because each like. Aura, as a trait, has a certain subset of rules on how it works. Mm-hmm. Spirits has another subset of rules. And we divided them up for theme and so that you only have to learn one little packet of rules. Mm-hmm. If you've got spirit, you do not need to know how any of the rest of the traits work. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. to you. So that when you're jumping in, you can just learn that bit of rule. Off you go. Second, third game, you want to learn some, some extra rule? Cool. Mm-hmm. Now read this paragraph. Now you can learn that mm-hmm. extra piece. It is technically possible to use aura and transform and um, what's the third uh, spirits on the same character, all of which have, sub- have subsystems. Like don't, but you can. <laughs> yeah. And when it works, oh my god! Like you can yeah. you can melt the face <laughs> off a titan with that. But when it doesn't work, your character just starts bleeding to death, and so it's quite um, it's quite a challenge. Yeah, I mean. A lot of them have like transform um, has a lot of things in it that, that take to take your health to use. Yeah, you, you you're perpetually bleeding, as it were. In like you you take damage over time from a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So you can stack uh, yourself up so that you can start taking a lot of damage that gets out of hand. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a it's a it's an active choice you've made to stack those. So it's on you, mm-hmm. um, which is honestly quite fun. Like it's an incredibly yeah. risky play style that you're opting mm-hmm. into. But yeah, yeah, you can you can cool. you can combine anything with anything. The only thing you're not allowed is the the royal stuff. So yeah. mm. a protector couldn't take warden powers. Mainly that's because it um, the roles focus on particular gameplay loops and particular reward stuff, mm-hmm. and particular ways of like inflicting wounds or soaking damage or having various things. And it wouldn't it would be too powerful for a for certain warden powers to combine with certain dead eye powers. But aside from that, mm-hmm. fine. Yeah, but okay. Other than that, take what you want, do whatever. Yeah. I like it. Honestly, like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, do Mix whatever. the rules if you want. I'm not your dad. I'm like, you're not in my house. Yeah. You can't tell me what's happening. I'm, exactly. like, I'm not going to come around and just like flip the table. Just smash the book out. Yeah. No, doing it wrong. Stop having fun. <laughs> oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> well, I mean, it's really. It's like the unfun version of Game Dad. Go <laughs> <laughs> to bed. Play, father. No dinner for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you you answered the next next question, which was, uh, what effect does this advancement have on the narrative? And, yeah, uh, does it uh, does it represent something in the story? And, yeah, I mean, and, without narrative, yeah. there is no advancement. It yeah. literally it does, right. it changes it changes the difficulty of the encounters a little bit. Like we've got a very rough guide to like, oh, depending on how many games you've played, this mm-hmm. is the number we figure the players will be at, and so you can have this many monsters. But really, you were right. And, to be honest with you, encounter difficulty is a really interesting topic in Unbound. Um, all of the monsters are divided into hierarchies. So I'm guessing a lot of people who listen to this have played an MMO before. Mm-hmm. You've done a dungeon or specifically a, like a Warcraft raid, right? Mm-hmm. You go and you do the first boss and it teaches you this little, this little tiny mechanic. 
Like, don't Hello, stand on. I'm a little tiny mechanic. <laughs> My Spanish <laughs> fix your car. <laughs> when I can get up in the pipes. When the dragon does this sort of an emote, don't stand here, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. And then you go into another boss, and it's like, oh, okay. Some of the platform falls away, and then the next boss is a different mechanic, and the next boss is a different mechanic. And then there's the end boss where you don't stand here, part of the platform falls away, and this happens. Mm. And we've built that into the hierarchies of our monsters. Mm. So there's mooks, which are just the basic... One wound. One wound. Dies. They die yeah. incredibly quickly. Then there's troops, elites, all the way up to legendaries. And legendaries are, are adversaries where you've been foreshadowing exactly how to defeat them through the entire campaign. So, for instance, there's one called the Twice Born Queen, which is um, like a lich. A, uh, yeah, a lich. So, 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 what she does is, if you kill her, she goes to a phylactery that you then have to, a set amount of time to destroy, and then you kill her. Right, that's the basic mm-hmm. mechanic. But mm-hmm. she also summons these lost souls that move towards her, and if they touch her, they heal her. So you have to stop the ads from reaching the main boss. Mm-hmm. And all of the, the hierarchies have these MMO-style boss mechanics mm. that you learn and, uh, throughout the hierarchy. Like, basically, we, we write the legendary first and then make everything worse and worse and worse down to mook. So as mm-hmm. you go back up through, you can learn what, the, what, the, what, the, what this kind of troop, what this kind of monster does, what, this, what, what kind of challenges you're facing. Uh, and the legendary fights are, like, hard. They're not supposed to lose, but they're definitely not supposed to win. And yeah. like in a lot of like in a lot of role playing games that like you're supposed to win every fight you're in, and you no, no. Actually, actually this actually these are really hard. Um, um, but what it means is yeah. that you can slowly push like as they've been fighting mooks, you start pushing more troops in, mm. and that ups the difficulty a bit. And if they're handling themselves, cool, you push more in until you push an yeah. elite in, and yeah. you you just step it up as you want. Mm. Um, and because you're setting the stakes you can actually set the stakes as fairly low and just put them against the legendary whenever you want. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they can just back out and lose whatever they've put at stake and survive. So you can, you can test the waters with difficulty mm-hmm. and uh, how far through they are and how advanced they are and how much they understand their characters. Very cool. I think that's us. I think yeah. so. I mean, this... Uh... This was a lot of fun. This yeah. was yeah. good. I enjoyed this. It's um, it's a it's a really fun way of spending a couple of hours to make this world together. But oh man, all the things we could do, and then it's quite a fun game to play as well. Uh, it's uh, it's like I'm really glad that we got that we put out again because it's perfect for this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, you you met, you know you sent me the message too, and I was like, yeah. oh Ryan, yep. this is <laughs> this is it. This is the one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, the person that's building a world building game. So, oh, yeah, mm. right. <laughs> Thank you both so much for joining us. Um, Grant, do you want to remind everybody where they can find you, what you're up yes, to? Yes, absolutely. You can go to twitter.com forward slash G S Howitt, G S H O W I T T, and see all the games. I put out one game a month minimum, um, and yeah. generally some longer games as well. Um, we've got some interesting stuff coming up soon as well. Uh, or you can go to rrdgames.com, which will have everything we've ever put out. Chris? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can be contacted through at GS Howitt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chris does not want to be found. And may Grant do it. <laughs> entirely, entirely sensible and fair, and I support yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, I am at the Madigan, but honestly, not no, really. I'm not really there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vacant lot. Have you been on Twitter? It's awful. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, it's a garbage right, place. Like, I don't want that. Uh, uh, well, thank you both again for sitting down to do this with us. And thank you for everyone tuning in. We'll see you next time. And that's it for our Unbound series. Uh, we are so glad that you could join us for this amazing game. Uh, since there are two Mondays left in the month of November, we will have a two week break before uh, new episodes come out. So, uh, you can join us in December, where we welcome Nick Butler, the designer of Tidebreaker, uh, to go over another uh, toolkit RPG system uh, that was really fun to create characters for. Yeah, um, you can hear Amelia really struggle to understand pop culture. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, before that, though, um, we do have some call to action items before we head out. 
First up, the One Shot Network is doing a twice as nice drive for Act Blue to help support fair elections in the Georgia runoff, which is in January. <laughs> we are looking to raise six thousand nine hundred and sixty-nine dollars, a very nice amount, to help <laughs> with this effort. You can donate to this cause at actblue.com slash donate slash GA69. Uh, every little bit will help, and there's a whole lot on the line there. So please, if you can, we would love it. Yeah, it would be a very good cause. Uh, now, having said that, we do have a couple reminders before we head out. Um, first of all, uh, please join me uh, every other Friday at uh, 7.30 p.m. Central Time to catch my brand new campaign using the Chimera RPG. It's called A Tale of Twinkle and Awe. And we're playing in a collaboratively built solar punk world that is blending magical girls, superheroes, and fantasy genres. Uh, you can find us at twitch.chimera.games. Uh, we did our first session this last Friday, and it was an absolute blast. Uh, so uh, this coming Friday, my good friend Ammer is also running another session of their stream, Cape and Blade, which is also fantastic. Uh, the Audioverse Awards finals are voting now through December 5th, so you can head to the Audioverse to audioverseawards.net and give them some votes. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said before in the opening, we are out of reviews again, so if you do the big do us the biggest favor ever and send in another review through Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or any number of podcast services, we would be eternally grateful. Uh, we, we just really need the pick me up and we like reading them. So it'd be, it'd be wonderful. And it does help us in the rankings, which helps people find us. Um, mm -hmm. and those people will then leave us more reviews and it's just a never ending cycle. So, um, <laughs> please, please leave us a review. Yes, please. Uh, we enjoy them so immensely. Uh, for now, uh, everybody enjoy your two week break. Um, happy Thanksgiving to those in the States. Um, and until next time, take care of yourselves, uh, take care of each other and keep making those amazing people. Uh, have a good couple of weeks, everyone. Bye. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Total Party Kill, 
Total Party Kill is a weekly live Twitch stream where John Patrick Cohen, Eddie Klinker, and James Dugan play through Cephalofair Games' Gloomhaven. Join them in the stream to play along through the action and interact with a constantly changing cast of characters and special guests, or watch them after the fact on the OneShot YouTube channel. TPK airs Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time at twitch.tv slash oneshotrpg. I did it. (laughs) The voice made that for me, though. That was- right, doesn't it? It's, it's very good. In a world. I just had to, like, run up and down two flights of stairs because the dog broke in and I had to, like, put her away. And now I'm, like, yeah. trying really hard to pretend that I'm not out of breath, but I totally am. Use it. Use that excitement. Yep. Use that energy. Oh, my gosh, I'm so excited for this game. I just, like, can't oh, even breathe. Yeah, I love the world. Uh, so. Oh. I'm so out of breath for this game. Oh, my God. <gasps> And I'm going to hope that this deck has 52 cards in it. It was open. I can make matter. no promises. I mean, Nobody will correct you. Like, you need about seven for our purposes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, just don't show. Yeah, you're fine. You've got loads. It, it, lo- it looks like a bunch of cards. So, there yeah. you go. that's all you need. Cut this out, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> this is gold. That is <laughs> golden outtakes right there. All and right. A, a um, tiny Sharpie. That's I accidentally fun. started recording in stereo because I was messing with my setup earlier, but whatever. Do we need to change back? I, no, it's fine. It's fine. We'll fix it in post. I'm just annoyed at myself. That's all. Full third best. Ed. Yeah, pretty much, isn't it? It's great. 100%. Yeah, I miss full third. <laughs> you know, I hear that. Like, I never played fourth edition, but I hear that from a lot of people that are like, oh, actually, secretly, it was the best one. Oh, it's great, yeah. It just, so, didn't, just didn't taste like D&D. Right. <laughs> like, it, as its own thing, it was a thing, mm. but like, Absolutely. if 3-5 three, three, was your favorite, then 4th was not. I've if, only ever played 5th. That is my gaming cred. Like, I've only <laughs> ever played 5th edition. So. That's fine. <laughs> I don't even own a copy of the player's handbook. Oh, I don't think I do no, anymore. No one owns a copy. I, 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 I just, you know, I've got one somewhere. <laughs> no, I think I got rid of mine. I think like, you've got, you've got, haven't you got like a three point five edition knocking around somewhere? No, I got rid of that as well. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Mm, there you go. Um, yeah. I have um, I have space on my shelves for good books. Wow! Well, hey, hey, <laughs> um, hey! I have a space for my copy of Heart, which I did not get to get at Gen Con this year, and I am waiting well, for. We were there. <laughs> Alone. <laughs> we were there in, Indian, in Indianapolis all by yourselves. It was weird. Nobody we else were, showed up. We were very confused. <laughs> Almost no foot traffic. <laughs> it was like, but kind of nice. A lot of space. Like the bathrooms didn't smell terrible this time. Yeah, you'd think, yeah. right? No, I think that's just a part of the bathrooms. That's that's just uh, Indianapolis, actually. Yeah, we have uh, we have had uh, the the shipping for Heart has been um, thrown off, shall I say, by some non-compliant wood. In the, in the in the same container that the books are in, not yeah. our wood. What to stress this? Someone else's wood hasn't been heat treated, so now America has to look at this box and go, "Hmm, is it an evil box?" and charge us two hundred and fifty dollars a day. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, just living the dream. So, game design super sexy, going really mm. well. Oh, it's, it's like sixty percent logistics. It's rubbish. I mean, <laughs> honestly. Like, you think it's all writing about elves, and no, it's how do you get a book from one country to another? Uh-huh. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. That's a stalling cough, I know it. Shut up, I'm sick. <laughs> I... It's missing one, but yeah. Oh, which is the one it's missing? Cause. Oh, yeah, you do need cores. Oh, Those are okay, crucial. Okay, look, I only skimmed the book. <laughs> I was technically working. <laughs> oh, I can't edit this document. Oh, what a show. Okay, well, I'll go first with cores, then. Okay. And then you, and then you, you go into rolls. Yep. No. No. It's too late. Oh, too oh, late. Yes. Oh, of course. No. No. Cores. Oh, C-O-R-E-S. Cores, like an apple core. Ah, cores. Every character has a delicious, chewy center. <laughs> it's nougat. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia? I got oh yeah. Wait. Oh sorry. Yeah, translate. Uh it's on it's twenty-seven on, of our document. I'm okay. so sorry. It's on twenty-three of our document, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Actually it's on thirteen of mine. Oh my god. <laughs> How many different versions are there? Okay, sorry. Uh disease. Disease. I got politics. Mm. Ooh, mm. I got light. And I got mm-hmm. and I got ice, disease, politics, light, and ice. You know what? I'm 
not in the mood for a disease politics game <laughs> in this particular <laughs> year. That one, yeah. uh, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and cross uh, that uh, off. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we're just going to cut that one out entirely and we're going to try again. That's a good idea. Yeah, please, please don't put that in the show and we'll just, we'll just go ahead and pretend we got something else. <laughs> All right. I'm just throwing the politics card away, I just drew. Mm-hmm. Her name? Her name? Yeah. Is that four Four lady. Four lady. Uh, no. Four person. God, there we go. Ah, it just doesn't work. <laughs> it's not as good. No. <laughs> it's like it's like gun person. It just doesn't have the same ring as gunman. Um. Well, while you think about that, I think I get a glass of water. And cut that out. So, I'll try not to say anything important or witty then. I'm actually going to grab something to drink real quick too. Well, I'm just going to sit here and think. <laughs> what? A terrifying noise. I I... Yay, my video is less janky. Hello. Hi. All right, I fixed my video, I think. Yay. What was wrong with it? It, it was very, like, um, I don't know, kind of janky. Uh, uh, because the technical term. It was plugged into a USB hub that's, like, suspiciously, like, cheap at best uh, okay. uh, that I got for free from like uh, a thing that I worked for a long time ago. Right. Like, here's your Christmas present. <laughs> it's a USB hub with our name on it. Hello. You can remember us forever. And it doesn't work. Though. It works. I mean, it technically um, works. Work is giving all of us free t-shirts. Because we were like Forbes' best company to work for in Wisconsin or something. And it was like, you cut 25% of my department. I would like those people back instead of my free stupid t-shirt. Do they get a t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. I don't know. Probably not. Yay. Yes, the waveforms. They were there. My, move oh, my God, microphone I'm, here. My gain is... I have to turn my gain down. Um, I was listening back to my um, my live stream from last Friday uh, because I have to uh, start planning the adventure now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like my I gain noticed... is really high too, and I'm trying to figure out which way which way is up and which way is down. Oh, that's, that's up. up. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely up. I can never remember which way to turn the knob. Yeah, the, I feel like this is backwards, is, right? It well, it is because you're supposed to be like, I don't know. No, that doesn't make any sense either. I don't know. Yeah, is that I know, okay? That seems, that seems fine. All right, I just like it's picking up every little like rustle, and I don't want. Oh yeah, that. yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I, I figured mine was too high when I could hear myself breathing um, during the stream. <sighs> No, it's past Halloween. I can't do serial killer breathing. Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> I love how whenever we record now, too, people are like, oh, oh, do the whole thing in that voice. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh. I can't. Why is my gain all messed up again? Does it sound weird to you? It looks like my waveforms no, look like garbage. It sounds fine. Are you mm. on the right uh, microphone input? I am. Okay, am I on the mic? Yep, I'm on the right one. Oh, maybe because it's on waveform and not waveform DB. Oh, yeah. Waveform oh, no, maybe. that looks even worse. What? I'm going to go back to waveform. waveform. It might just be like the scale that I have it at, you know? Yeah, it could be. Anyway, uh, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. See, now it seems okay. Maybe I just need to sit a little further from my microphone. Okay. Now it's going to be so quiet. Hello. 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 Okay. Hello. There we go. Very nice. Delightful. Mm, on to the mono. <laughs> oh, I'm in stereo. So am I. Oh, it's fine. Okay. So the internal playtesting, like the stuff that Grant and I were running, was loud. <laughs> a door. <laughs> <laughs> it was what? It was what? <laughs> it was From the top. Internal playtesting. Yes. 
Sorry, my dad has chosen this exact moment to do like construction right <laughs> underneath me. Oh. Um, so there's like loud drilling noises. Cool. Sh- should Ryan ask this question? <laughs> Yeah, Ryan, maybe you should, because <laughs> okay. I don't have to, like, mute my... Th- I, who knows how long this is going to go on. That's fine. <laughs> uh, it's, um, it's... Sorry, chat's a bit creaky. Lovely. Hey. We're going to stop this.